The Uncharted movie is about to come out, but now's the perfect time to talk about Horizon Zero Dawn. This game's loved by many people, and I'm here to ruin the fun because I have something called a different opinion. That's right, the boogeyman's back ruining gaming for everyone. Now, I don't think this game is as overrated as other games I made a video on, but I don't think it's as good as it's made out to be. Like, I don't think it's one of the greatest games of all time or anything like that. And I don't think this game is anything special. So let's just start off with the story. Now the story for this game is another one of those stories where humanity creates technology to make lives easier and better and technology eventually starts taking over. And it doesn't really do anything different. It's just what you would normally expect with this concept. But with that being said, it was interesting to figure out what was going on in the world. Like finding out why robots are running the streets, who exactly is Aloy, and why does everyone hate her. Finding these answers were pretty interesting. But the way the story is told in this game is just so boring. It's either Aloy and some character facing each other with expressionless faces and lip sync that's sometimes off, or Aloy looking at a hologram of something from the past. And this is all with nasty dialogue. Right as soon as the game started, I heard words come out of this man's mouth, and I realized that the dialogue was going to be poo. The lines just sound so unnatural, and it's just boring to sit through. Now some of the characters like Aloy and Silence sound good, but a bunch of the other characters sound poo. But I can't really tell if it was the voice acting or the dialogue. Like some characters sound pretty bad voice acting wise, and the one that I can remember very clearly is Olin, but other characters like Rost, Avad, and Aaron sound bad, but I don't think it's the voice actors' fault, because I feel like it's just the dialogue and expressionless faces that make them seem like robots. One of the actors played Itachi in the Naruto dub, and he plays Helis in this game, and his performance in Naruto was amazing. So I feel like most of the poo has to do with the dialogue and the animations. In the DLC, it isn't that bad because they actually move around instead of facing each other and standing still the entire time. But I think the worst part about the entire story is the characters and most notably Aloy. Aloy is just generic and one dimensional with no arc. She's the same perfect OP character the entire game. Sometimes she gets mad and she flames people here and there, but that's pretty much it. They had so many opportunities to make her a really interesting character, but they chose to do nothing. Now I get that she was training her entire childhood to compete in the proving and that she has the focus, but at the end of the day, she's just a regular human being. Well, a clone, but the person she's a clone of, Dr. Sobek, is intelligent. She's not Wonder Woman. If she was physically enhanced, then it wouldn't have been that big of an issue because it would make sense as to how she's able to solo massive robots at 19, when it normally takes a squad of hunters to take down. But more importantly, she's just the same flawless protagonist the entire game that doesn't go through any arc or anything whatsoever. She always knows what to do, she's friendly, and she's outgoing. They could have had her start off as a Sigma female not giving a shit about anyone other than Ross because everyone shot on her as a kid. And as the game progressed, she could have turned into the character we have in the game. But for some reason, she's nice to everyone, even though she was treated like the GTA trilogy. They could have done so much with Aloy, but she's just there to feed the player exposition. And the characters in general in this game are poo, and the one that they wasted the most was her bully. They had to make fun of her at the beginning of the game, and they had to make fun of her right before he got smoked. They could have had him develop into a human being instead of staying a penis the entire game, but they said no. Like it would have been nice to see Aloy start the game as a Sigma woman, with both her and the bully hating each other, and have them eventually turn into better people by the end of the game. Aloy can turn into who she was the entire game, and the boy could have turned into a regular, decent human being. The two could have had a positive relationship, and if they killed him after Aloy starts caring about him, then Aloy would have had some other character moments as well. But none of this happened, and the characters in the game were just so underutilized. Now before I get into the gameplay, I'll quickly talk about the dialogue options. So, the dialogue options are just whatever. Most of them are there just to find out more information about a certain character, the land you're on, and stuff like that. But there are some options where Aloy can either be an asshole, nice, or like, clever, kinda. But the issue with this is that it doesn't really do anything for her character. Regardless of what you choose, Aloy is the same character by the end of the game. And you don't even get different endings or anything of that manner, so there's really no point of these special dialogue options. They were just unnecessary. But let's move on to the gameplay. Now the gameplay does get better over time. You get more weapons, you see more enemies, get more upgrades, and it's what you'd normally expect with open world games. But the worst part without a doubt is having to tame a new horse robot so often in the beginning. And this wouldn't be a huge issue if it wasn't so hard to try and find them. They spawn in specific locations, and if you aren't near that location, you'd have to just leg it to the next objective marker. This was something I had to do early on, and it was so frustrating. You don't even have much of the map opened up either, so you were barely able to fast travel. But once you get the upgrade where you can spawn a horse on command, and once you get all the fast travel points, it's fine. 
but it is still a huge inconvenience at the beginning and they should have made it so that they were evenly scattered throughout the map so that you don't have to run for miles early on in the game and so that it gives you more of an incentive to explore the world. And something else that would have been better would be to ride every single machine. So like the hawks and shit instead of just the bull and horse ones. And maybe even getting an upgrade where you can use their weapons while riding them. That would be sick and hopefully we get something like that in Forbidden West. But let's move on to the stealth and the combat. Now, the stealth is whatever, because you can also place traps and shit instead of being forced to press a single button behind the enemies, but most of the time, I just went head on. And you can also use your focus to help you, which is basically your Witcher Sense, Detective Mode, Eco Vision, or like any alternate vision from any other game, but the main reason I used focus was to find the weak points in the robots when it came to head on combat. And I think the combat is the best aspect of the gameplay. The bow and the weapons are fun to use, and getting the kills, especially on the massive robots, is satisfying. But one of my issues with it is only having 4 weapons equipped. I found myself using the regular bow, the trip caster, the slingshot and the tear blaster while barely using the other weapons. And this is cause I didn't have to use them as often and when I did, I had to unequip something that was currently equipped in order to use it. But my other issue with the combat is the health of some of the enemies. This only happened later on in the game, but some of them are just hit sponges. Not a lot of them, but for some of the enemies, I'd have to run through so much ammo trying to kill them. But it was only a couple of enemies like the hawk, so it wasn't really a huge issue. But aside from the combat, I think they also missed out on like a grappling arrow, a tightrope arrow, and like a swinging arrow. If they had more upgrades like this, then I think the gameplay would have been really good. But with what we've got, I think the gameplay is good, but not as good as like Sex One by Jacob Batalon. And because of that, it also made the open world activities just good. Like clearing all the corrupted zones, banded camps, completing all the trials, and overriding the core collagens are fun because the combat is good. But one thing that the gameplay doesn't save is the side missions. They all boil down to, help me, I left my condoms in the trash can, but I forgot to put hot sauce in it. Can you please find it and bring it back to me? Or something like, my dumbass dad messed with the wrong people and he's on death row for tax evasion. Can you clap them and save my dad and bring him back to me? They're super unoriginal and it doesn't help that the issues with the story carry on as well. Like the dialogue, poo characters, and everything. If there were side missions where a character tells you to subscribe to the channel because only 4% of the people watching these videos are subscribed, then the side missions would have been great. But one thing that's poo in both the story and side missions but is more noticeable in the side missions is those poo missions where you have to use your focus to follow tracks. Now I'm fine with these types of missions if there are a few of them, but there were just way too many of them in this game. But the last thing that I want to talk about when it comes to the world is the traversal and how there's no minimap. The marker keeps screwing you up and it becomes the GTA GPS giving you the legal directions of getting to your destination. So sometimes when you follow the marker, it leads you further away from the objective when you could have just crossed the hill or crossed the river or something. So if there was a minimap or like a ghost of Tsushima wind or something, I wouldn't have been heading in the wrong way, making the travel unnecessarily longer in some scenarios. But this isn't a huge issue though cause later Later on you can just fast travel. Now apparently this game isn't very good on PC, but on PS4 the game runs well. It runs like any other open world game in 30 FPS and it holds up visually 5 years later in 2022. Also I platinum this game cause it was pretty easy, so I'd give it like a 1.5 out of 10 platinum trophy difficulty. None of the trophies were hard other than maybe getting like all the stars at the trials and even those challenges are pretty easy. You just have to go for the other trophies like the one where you knock down all the llama training dummies. But anyways, I'd say Horizon Zero Dawn is somewhere between decent and good. But since the DLC is pretty nice, I'd say it's more on the good end, so I'll give the complete edition that I played a good. Like I said early on in the video, the cutscenes are much easier to sit through with better animations and there are also some new machines and a new lightning staff kind of weapon. But I wouldn't say this game is as good as it's made to be and at the most, I'd say the game is good. I'm pretty sure everyone who had a PlayStation before May of last year has this game because it went for free regardless of whether you had PS Plus or not, but on PC, I guess you have to buy it. But I had a decent time with this game and I spent about 40 hours playing through the DLC and getting 100% of the trophies in the base game. But anyways, for some reason, they're deciding to drop Horizon Forbidden West in the middle of February. It's already looking horrible with people cancelling their pre-orders left and right because of Uncharted, Donda 2, and the biggest release of them all, Sex 2. Microsoft just bought the Sex franchise and the CEO of Sex finally set the release date of Sex 2 for February 14th, which is the same week as Horizon Forbidden West release. So I'm really curious to see how this turns out. And let me know what you guys are playing, watching, or listening to first. I'm pretty sure the answer is obvious, but let me know in the comments. But that's it for this video. Later.